you know, life is short, so let's get right into it. Here are the last words before dying of famous historical figures. Nostradamus was an astrologer, apothecary, physician, and seer. He is most famous for his book, The Prophecies, in which he made hundreds of predictions that cover events up to the year 3797. His predictions were cryptic and deliberately vague, but many believe that he accurately predicted many major historical events. These include the French Revolution, the rise of Napoleon, the two world wars, the assassination of John F. Kennedy, and the September 11th attacks. As a result, he has become a significant figure in pop culture. On the last day of June, 1566, suffering from gout and edemia, he summoned his secretary and said, you will not find me alive at sunrise. And the next morning, he was found lying on the floor next to his bed. And as predicted, he was dead. Charles IX became the King of France at age 10 in 1560. His reign was dominated by the French War of Religions between the Calvinist Huguenots, who were Protestant, and the Catholics. King Charles, who was himself Catholic, is most notorious for allegedly ordering the killings of thousands of Huguenots in an event known as the St. Bartholomew's Day Massacre. He died of tuberculosis at the age of 23. His last words before dying, Oh, my nurse, my nurse, what blood, what murders, what evil counsels have I followed? Oh, my God, pardon me and have mercy on me if thou can. I know not what I am. What shall I do? I am lost. I see it well. Winston Churchill was a prominent British statesman, military officer, and writer who served as the Prime Minister of the United Kingdom from 1940 to 1945, and again from 1951 to 1955. He is regarded as one of the greatest military leaders in history. He lived a very full and interesting life, as you might imagine. He served in the British Army beginning in 1895. He then became a war correspondent, author, and was elected to the Parliament in 1900, where he served for decades. After World War II, he went on to play a significant role in shaping Cold War policies. And in 1953, he was awarded the Nobel Prize in Literature. In addition to politics, Churchill was known as a prolific drinker and a cigar smoker. In fact, many only know Churchill as a famous cigar smoker. On January 9th, 1965, he suffered a stroke and was given only hours to live by his doctor. But this is Winston Churchill, and he was going to go out on his own schedule. His last words were to his son-in-law on January 15th, a week before he died. He stated, I'm bored with it all. He then slipped into a coma and died on January 24th. I guess when you live the kind of life Churchill did, slipping into a coma and dying peacefully is a boring way to go. Born in 1755, Marie Antoinette became the Queen of France in 1774. She was known for her extravagant lifestyle and love of fashion. She is said to have purchased up to 300 gowns a year. And that didn't sit well with the people of France who were living just the opposite of an extravagant lifestyle. During the French Revolution, the monarchy was abolished and she was arrested, tried, and found guilty of treason. She was sentenced to death. On her way to the guillotine, she accidentally stepped on the executioner's foot, to which she stated, pardon me, sir, I meant not to do it. Those words of apology would be her last. Dwight Eisenhower was born on October 14, 1890, and would rise to prominence by becoming a five-star general and serve as the Supreme Allied Commander of the Allied Expeditionary Forces in Europe during World War II. He was the first Supreme Commander of NATO and later became President of the United States, serving from 1953 to 1961. He was a champion of civil rights and the interstate highway system, signed the bill that established NASA, and famously warned against the military-industrial complex. During the last decade and a half of his life, Eisenhower suffered from several health issues. These included a couple of heart attacks and a stroke. Just prior to passing away, 
Eisenhower said, I want to go, God take me. He knew he had accomplished a great deal in his life and he was ready to move on to the next. Ludwig von Beethoven was one of the most influential composers in Western music history. He is recognized as a crucial transitional figure between the classical and romantic periods in music, and his work is marked by a significant evolution in musical style and expression. Some of his most notable works include Symphony No. 5 and Symphony No. 9, as well as several piano sonatas. His contributions to music not only transformed the art form, but also established him as a towering figure in cultural history. Even if you don't listen to classical music, you've probably heard Beethoven, especially if you've ever ridden in an elevator. He died in 1827 after suffering from what was thought to have been liver failure. Prior to his death, he uttered the following, friends applaud, the comedy is over. These words were typically used at the time to end Italian comedy performances. Benedict Arnold is best known for being a traitor to the American cause during the Revolutionary War. He secretly negotiated with the British to surrender the American fort at West Point in exchange for money and a commission in the British Army. But before he died, he served heroically as an American general. He helped capture Fort Ticonderoga in 1775, led a failed invasion of Quebec the same year, and played a crucial role in the American victory at the Battle of Saratoga in 1777. But that was all forgotten when he switched sides and led British forces against American troops in Virginia and Connecticut, burning New London in 1781. He became synonymous with treason in American culture, and his name is often used as a byword for betrayal. He reportedly stated prior to his death in 1801 while in England, let me die in this old uniform in which I fought my battles. May God forgive me for ever having put on another. Okay, I must admit, I laughed a little when I read this one. John Sedgwick was a prominent Army Union general during the American Civil War. He fought at Antietam, where he was wounded three times, at Chancellorsville, Gettysburg, and in the Overland Campaign. On May 9, 1864, while leading troops at the Battle of Spotsylvania Courthouse, he said to one of his soldiers, they couldn't hit an elephant at this distance. Moments later, you guessed it, he was killed by a sharpshooter. Yeah, maybe he should have thought more about seeking cover. I mean, he was in the middle of a war after all. John Adams is one of the founding fathers of the United States of America. He was an early and vocal advocate for American independence from Great Britain and played a major role in the Continental Congress from 1774 to 1777. He, along with Thomas Jefferson, was one of the Committee of Five that drafted the Declaration of Independence, and he was instrumental in pushing it through Congress. He was the first Vice President of the United States and the second President, and he made significant contributions to American political philosophy particularly in his emphasis on checks and balances in government. Despite being on the same side for the cause of freedom, John Adams and Thomas Jefferson were political rivals, and their opinions as to the role of the federal government differed greatly. In fact, their differences would result in their friendship breaking down after the election of 1800, and they would not communicate with each other for several years. But in 1811, with the help of mutual friend Benjamin Rush, they renewed their correspondence and exchanged letters frequently for the remainder of their lives. John Adams' last words before dying on July 4th, 1826 were, Thomas Jefferson survives. He was unaware, however, that Jefferson had passed away only hours prior. Frank Sinatra is famous for being one of the most iconic and influential entertainers of the 20th century. Sinatra began his career during the big band era, initially gaining fame as a vocalist with the Harry James and Tommy Dorsey orchestras in the late 1930s and early 1940s. He transitioned to a solo career in 1942, becoming a cultural phenomenon known for his smooth vocal style and emotional delivery. 
Sinatra was also an Academy Award-winning actor, winning for Best Supporting Actor for his role in From Here to Eternity in 1953. Known as Old Blue Eyes and the Chairman of the Board, Sinatra became a symbol of coolness and sophistication. He is one of the best-selling musical artists in history, with an estimated 150 million records sold worldwide. Sinatra suffered from several health issues later in life, including high blood pressure, bladder cancer, and heart disease. He died on May 14, 1998. Sinatra's last words were reportedly, I'm losing, as he faced his final moments with his wife Barbara and his manager. Have you ever thought about what your final words might be? Let me know in the comments below. Oh, and before you go, check out this video that YouTube says you're gonna like. And until next time, I'm Dennis Gill for Revealing History.